Yorgos Lanthimos and Emma Stone are reteaming once again for Kinds of Kindness. This is a brand new anthology story that is three different stories all wrapped into one with one little small through line, but in reality, they're completely separate. And I didn't know how to feel about this movie going in because typically I am not a fan of anthology stories within movies. So... Let's see what I thought about this one. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, we're going to be discussing Kinds of Kindness. This is directed and written by Yorgos Lanthimos, but it also brings back his writing partner from The Lobster, Dog Tooth, Killing of a Sacred Deer, which just marks it right there that what kind of Yorgos Lanthimos movie are we getting here? Now, if you're a fan of The Favorite, if you're a fan of Poor Things, this probably might not be your cup of tea. This might be something that's a little bit different, unless you've seen his previous work in his earlier works such as The Lobster, Killing of a Sacred Deer, and Dogtooth. And for me, I've loved a majority of Yorgos Lanthimos' work, and I like how he has these two different sides, the one with Tony and when he writes with him, and specifically when he also writes with Filippo and what he creates with The Lobster and Killing of a Sacred Deer. And for me, Kinds of Kindness was the type of movie that I didn't know what to expect from, but I also at the same time also had an idea of what I was getting. And for the most part, it was exactly what I was kind of going into this was three bizarre, unique short stories that really might have a little bit of a through line, but not really all that too much. And I think for me, when I watch this movie in some way, shapes and form, it feels like an exercise of Emma Stone and Yorgos Lanthimos's relationship and their partnering. And also just that you get these like little snacks in between what we just got from poor things and whatever they're going to be planning to do next. I think labeling this movie as a Yorgos Lanthimos snack is like one of the best ways to kind of devour this movie and specifically to bring it on in. Like this is not a movie for the masses, nor is this a movie for everyone. The movie is specifically made for people who love early work of Yorgos Lanthimos and I think is for people who enjoy anthology stories. Now, I'm one half of that. And as I mentioned in my intro, I love Yorgos Lanthimos, but I'm not a fan of anthology stories. And to kind of put to what my bread and butter is, I watched this movie, and I liked about two-thirds of it. And there's three stories in here, so if you can put two and two together, I like two of the stories in here, and I found that one of them was sorely lacking just certain depth, or just in general entertainment. But Kinds of Kindness goes back to that darker satirical comedy that Yorgos Lanthimos very much was known for earlier in his career, where everything bizarre might be happening in this world. Everything unique is happening in this world, and the atmosphere is just dry and bleak, and the performances are exquisite, but you don't get a lot of answers to certain things at all, like with certain things that you might be wondering to that. The endings might be blunt, and things might just be off, but in the same point in time, what I love about Yorgos Lanthimos' movies like this is the fact that they all weirdly, like, if something weird is happening in this world, it's just happening. And that's a normal thing for this world. So I definitely want to hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. Please leave your thoughts down there. Hit that like and subscribe button. And without further ado, let's jump into Kinds of Kindness and overall why I liked it, but I still didn't love it. And so... Starting with my pros, uh, the performances throughout each of the three stories, while they do reuse a majority of the actors, I think the only story that only had one actor that appeared was Hunter Schaefer, who appears in the third story. I wish they used Hunter a little bit more, but for the little small role, it was nice. It was a good performance. But honestly, looking at everyone involved here, I think one of the things that I really loved about it was how they used Jesse Plemons. I think Jesse Plemons is actually one of the best parts about this entire film. And primarily in the first two stories, even though I didn't love the second one, his performance was brilliant. And it same thing goes for the first one where I was really just invested with not just the world, but also the character himself and what he was going through. And his dynamic with Willem Dafoe in that first story was impeccable. It was awesome. And I think what Willem Dafoe really brings in a gravitas, same thing with Jesse Plemons, is both of them brings this energy and kind of shining light to the story. And really focusing just a little bit on Defoe for a second is you get this giddy feeling every single time he shows up in one of these stories. While he plays a side character in there, the second these stories start, you're always wondering, oh, who is he going to play in this one? And when you get introduced to him, you're like, oh, I'm liking this role. 
Defoe brings a sensibility that I don't think many actors these days can, and I think he's absolutely great. Again, Jesse Plemons as well, also great, never a weak performance, and Emma Stone is just stellar in here. Nothing will beat her Poor Things performance for quite a while, but she is great in here. I honestly think for an exercise for her, though, her performance in here was very subdued, very held back, and again, reminds me of that earlier work that we would see from Yorgos Lanthimos. It's very bleak, and it's very dry, and that's how her performance overall very much felt for a lot of it, but I dug it. And I think primarily the third story is where you get to see a lot more of her acting in here and her chops, and I just love that. Again, this is very much an exercise for not just Yorgos Lanthimos, but also all the actors involved here. As well, throughout the rest of this, Margaret Qualley is superb. I love the usage of her in the third film primarily. Again, wish they used her just a little bit more. And same thing goes for Hong Chao. I wish they used her as well more. The three main characters in almost every single one of these stories was always consistently Jesse Plemons, Emma Stone, and Willem Dafoe. I just wish they gave the others just a tad bit more to do. And last but not least, Yorgos Lanthimos is just a phenomenal director. Every time it comes down to one of these stories, he is very much able to craft such a unique and bleak world. And that's one of the things I really much established is that a lot of his earlier work, what I love about it is, again, that satirical nature that he brings to our society and certain aspects of things that he's trying to poke and make fun of in the first film he's in a way making fun of corporations and how some of us at least is the way i viewed it and you can absolutely disagree with me if you want to he's making fun of corporations and like ass kissers to that and like what we would do for our bosses and like what happens if we didn't decide to go that route and maybe how that stronghold of a corporation can hold over one person the second story very much dives into a relationship, a broken one in some perhaps, and that maybe the person you love is not the person that you actually knew once you kind of had that extended time away from them. And also, how does that mess and affect your daily life? And I feel like that's one thing with looking at a toxic relationship in that manner. And then the third film, I mean, I don't really know what he was trying to say. I think it was a little bit about family life. I think it was also about like religious life as well. And there's a lot of bleakness in that one, but I found that one to just be the most oddest, but also weirdly enough, the most entertaining of them all. Even though I said entertaining, the first one is still probably my favorite th story out of them. And if I were to rank them, I would probably go one, three, and two in terms of my enjoyment through all of these. But also you do get the laughs, you get some weird things that happen throughout here and just moments that you sit there like, yeah, this is entertaining. It's baffling, but it's entertaining. And really much your enjoyment of this movie is going to come down to how you feel on Yorgos Lanthimos in the end of the day. Like if you're a fan of just the favorites and poor things, then I don't know if this might be for you. If you love his earlier work, I think you're really going to enjoy this and probably be like, yeah, that was a nice little snack that I just got to devour and enjoy. And if you've never liked any of those, then like this is definitely not for you. And if you're watching this being like, I don't get how this guy even liked this movie, then I have to imagine you didn't like any of his other work or somehow you found your way into the movie theaters to check this film out. Before we dive into my issues, I do want to talk about a couple mixed aspects and just overall general thoughts that I had on the film. And a couple things those on those is that I expected these shorts to be a little bit deeper in terms of like what I was trying to devour. And surprisingly enough, I didn't feel like there was a lot of meat for me to like really chew on and marinate and like decide on of like what is like your ghost trying to say here as a director? What are these actors trying to put in here? What is the writer trying to put in here? And I think maybe other people will take away from that a little bit differently that no, there is a lot of stuff to dive into here other than the surface level stuff you just talked about. But Every little detail is going to matter as well as like the through line. I'm always interested in how these anthology stories can do through lines. And I was hoping that kinds of kindness was going to have a more stricter one throughout it. Uh, truly enough for me, there's one major thing. And that's like a character that barely has any lines shows up in each and every one of the shorts for what that reason is. I couldn't tell you, but there is an intriguing thing like certain similar things happen in each of the stories and I think that's the thing that I really enjoyed was how they were pieced together but I think in the end of the day each and every one of these stories were conceived separately and then brought together 
And you might notice something a little bit deeper than I actually thought. I found a lot of these to just be pretty surface level and just overall there to give us entertainment. Which I think is really where it rounds me out into my issues on the movie and really the reasons that I didn't come out loving this movie, nor did I come out saying this is one of the best things Yorgos Lanthimos has ever done. In fact, out of everything he's ever done, I think this is probably the weakest film he's done. And that is a personal preference. A lot of that really just stems from the fact that I just don't like anthology stories. I think the pacing for this is pretty bad. Like for two hours and 44 minutes, there were times where I was like, all right, let's move this on. And a lot of that might just be because of the second story, which I liked from the like the first 10 minutes, but it really started to lose itself by the end. And then I was really hoping. And then by the time the third one started, I was sitting there just like, okay, Let's see where this goes. And the third one started to bring me back up. But by the end of it, I was just tired and ready to go home from the theater. And maybe this is better to watch in like minute seconds, like watching the first short and then, you know, taking a break, going eat and lunch, doing whatever throughout my day and then watching the second short, enjoying it a little bit more. And then same thing with the third one. And like when I look at them in pieces and if I were to watch them separately, I could obviously grade them separately. And I like looking at it from that point of view, I felt like I would enjoy them more because then I just get a flavor of Yorgos Lanthimos. But instead I ate a snack for two and a half hours. And when you eat a snack like that, sometimes it's just a tad bit too much and ruins your appetite for the entire meal. I know I'm using a lot of food metaphors for this movie, but it's like the best way that I could like really much influence how I felt watching kinds of kindness, a movie that I did like, I just wasn't blown away by it. A lot of that leads down into just the way that the film was structured and built around around an anthology story. I found the pacing to be weak. I found one of the stories to be pretty poor. There was just a little bit more to do in each and every one of the stories as well. I think there were clever ideas in here, but on the contrary to that, the performances are incredible. I like the atmosphere that Yorgos Lanthimos puts into each and every one of these stories. I also didn't shout this out, but the score is pretty well done, even though it's very simple. And in a way, Kinds of Kindness is Yorgos at his most simple and his most bizarre. Depending on how you feel on his earlier work will really decide if this is for you. And for me, as I mentioned, it's a nice snack of three short stories brought together by its atmosphere and performances. Did I love it? No. Did I still enjoy it? Yes. Will I rewatch it anytime soon? Probably not. I think if you're a fan of Yorgos Lanthimos, I can recommend the movie. If you are not, though, I, I can't at all. It's going to very much decide on that. So definitely leave your thoughts down below. And with all that said, I'm going to give Kinds of Kindness a B minus. I think I would have been a little bit higher on this if it wasn't for that second story. Maybe would have gone a B plus. But overall, let me know down below your guys' thoughts. Thank you so much again for watching this. And of course, until next time, stay classy.